Okay, we are here with John from BJB. John Pyle is kind of the resident expert on this kind of mold making, and he is a great resource for those of you that are doing uh, really any kind of mold making, but especially John, John's work really excels in the realm of uh, rapid prototyping, product development, that sort of thing. And John has been kind enough to sit down with me and discuss some of the particulars of his molds because his molds are uh, literal works of art. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's let's jump right in. So we've sure. got some molds here that have some that are a little bit more advanced than uh, some of the ones we showed in previous videos. Mm -hmm. So uh, take me through that. Yeah, so this is an actual functioning part. So we had to get some real fine hole so it actually function, you know. Um, so um, on this guy, we needed to use some slides, which are Is this these like a machine. shaving cream? Yeah, it was actually a edible. suntan lotion spray. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so basically what we had to do is come up with, there's no way silicone in these holes would be straight or function properly. They'd probably eventually tear out. So we made some slides instead. Okay. Taking the place of the silicone. So in this particular case, slide these two here. We've got this pin. Let's see. This one goes down and it's keyed. I have a little key here okay. so it's set right because I have a little dimple here that this interfaces with. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. So that goes there and then from this side this will key into that other section so you have a through hole. Okay. And that was necessary for this this part. And then I have a you know a few uh, four vents, and a sprue. And are these aluminum? Yeah. Okay. So you got mm -hmm. aluminum pins going in, and then on this mold, did you have to clamp that or anything? It feels tight enough. Rubber bands. <laughs> okay. I, I typically use rubber bands on something like this, but yeah, it, there's not a lot of pressure. So. And yeah. then uh, what can I can I make a, an educated guess yeah. as to what uh, what this yeah. is? Uh, yes. Eight ninety. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, yeah. Uh, so I'm seeing a, a trend. <laughs> six minute work time, which okay. is plenty for something this small. Okay. And uh, yeah, worked real well with that. And yeah. so again, this is the kind of thing that in the prototyping world, you're simulating ABS. Mm -hmm. or so, okay. Yeah. Something and uh, with this, so was this was this an SLA part or was this? Yes, is, it was. Okay. Yeah. So this is an SLA part, and this is one of those things again where. Uh, you know, SLA parts, you know, any kind of 3D printed parts, this is where this kind of mold making comes into play when obviously you don't want to be printing each one of these. It's like baking cookies one at a time. So the benefit we have with doing this, marrying this up with 3D printing <clears throat> is then you get to pick out the, the physical properties that you can't necessarily pick out with mm -hmm. an SLA material. So we've got this SLA pattern. You make the mold of that, and then is this your, is this your pour, pour uh -huh, spout the here? sprue? Uh -huh. Okay, and and I'm I'm guessing just because of this part, I'm guessing this was definitely under pressure. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boy, that is it. That it doesn't is... necessarily have to be, but if I've got it, I'm using it. So yeah. Okay, and again, this was the six minute working time in the 890. What's the demold time on that? Uh, I think it's well because this is a thin wall part. Our demol times that we stayed on our data sheets and things is eighth inch thick. This is about a sixteenth, so it might be a little longer. So maybe two hours, something okay. like that. And are there so when you are picking out the eight ninety? And I know that that's a, a great a great one for all the parts we've been talking about. Uh, but when you're picking out a part like this, so you've got your SLA pattern, and what's your thought process when you're choosing that resin? Um, well, there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of things to consider. Um, this isn't going to take a lot of heat, so I'm not really too worried about heat deflection temperature, which a TC890 has got a decent heat deflection temperature, but um, there's no excessive heat. It's not used outdoors. Um, it's a one-to-one -one system. It's nice and easy to, it's easy to use. It's a um, relatively like a relatively low viscosity, so it flows well into thin, thin walls. Uh, so yeah, that's, and then as far as the tolerances on this, because I know yeah. on the silicone end, uh, all these molds, and this looks like, is this 5040? I believe it is, yes. Okay, so 5040 silicone, which is a, a nice kind of translucent uh, platinum system. 
And also, I should point out that uh, if done in accordance with the prophecy, SLA parts can be molded with platinum silicon. That's one that I, I had always molded SLA patterns with platinum. So I was okay. kind of surprised. Did you seal them? A, yes. Typically? Oh, yeah. Definitely painted, yeah. sealed, everything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I have a fair amount of uh, followers on YouTube who have run into all kinds of problems with that. Uh -huh. So um, typically, what, how do you prep a part like this for molding with. And I should say, and let me qualify this because I know I'm going to get questions about this. This is what John is about to explain is specific to how he would prep that for like this 5040 or say the 5041 we had in some other videos. Yeah. So how would you, you've got your SLA pattern. Um, how do you typically prep that for making a, a platinum mold like this? Yeah, I, I like to have like a gray primer, like okay. our SEM high build primer. Uh, so I usually do do that, and I do the filling and, and things like that, the sanding. Okay. Um, and then I'll have a final coat and maybe light sand it depending on the finish. Sometimes I'll spray a texture on if I want a textured finish Okay. before I mold, but a lot of times it'll just be a flat, just a light sanding and, and make sure I don't break through to the SLA. Okay. Because sometimes it's, it, it can be a problem, so a lot of times it's not, but okay. I'd rather be safe, so have a nice coat of... Either primer or, you know, we even have a clear coat that works as well. Yeah. Okay. What's the clear that you guys, is it another SEM? SEM, or? clear coat, yeah. Okay. And, it, and it's like if I want a high gloss level, I'll spray that, and then I won't touch it. Okay. Make sure it cures, uh, you know, maybe overnight before I uh, pour the mold. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And you said these molds, and these are these are pretty firm silicone. This is about yeah. a 40, a 40 Shore A. Mm -hmm. um, and you just rubber band these shut. You yeah. Know, no, no. Uh, Special treat. Anything you have to do is turn this at a uh, an angle or anything. Yeah, or? I still will do that. I'll have the sprue at the low point. This particular part, we talked about this little spray head, but this actually the spray tip goes up into um, yeah this part. So mm -hmm. you have these interlocking parts, and this is one of those things that uh, this is where really good mold making, really good casting really come into play to make these nice interlocking parts. And then this, of course, has this unique thing of you've got this hole here that connects to something else. And how do you typically address this kind of thing with this pin? And um, I know a, a lot of guys might like put tape on that or something. Yeah. But, but yeah, tell me about your choice of that. And uh, I know this is, a, this is a whole different piece of clockwork here that you have going on. Yeah, well, it was just easier. Um, yes, I could use tape on the outside here, but then you've got undercut. The silicone would be undercut to pull it out. Over time, that, that could be a problem, having the mold last for very long, you know? Um, okay. So a pin just seems a, a simpler, cleaner way of doing it and probably get more parts out of the mold. Okay. Yeah. And so is there any, any particular thing, and again, like with the, uh, the whole concept of a pin is that you know, with silicone, even a fairly firm silicone like this 40 Shore A, um, in a thin section, that's still gonna have a little bit of wiggle. And when you're dealing with really precision parts that have to go click yeah. together and be assembled, you can't have an allowance for any stuff wiggling around. So yeah, that's a unique part because you got thin walls and then you have interlocking stuff and holes and pretty much all the, all the complicated stuff. And then of course, you're yeah. filling through here Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and Angling venting, it. venting out through all those vents right there. Yeah. So, um, excellent. Well, I will link in the uh, video description, I will link to the, you guys have the, the mold kit with the SEM primer uh -huh. and all that and the, the vents and the sprues and everything. Yeah. So I will link to that in the video description. So be sure to check 50, that out. 5040 and 5030 are clear. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this is TC5040 and I will link to that in the uh, video description. So check that out as well. Um, but most importantly, on the end screen, check out the links to uh, John's video where he makes a much more complicated uh, block mold on there and really gets into the vent strategy and all that. So uh, definitely check the end screen for some of those. And I'll also put a link to my video on uh, cure inhibition. So real important, those of you starting out wondering what's compatible with what, um, that video includes some information about testing different surfaces and, and that sort of thing. So, John, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate you. your input. Uh, and those of you that are doing this kind of mold making where you're doing these really precision parts, 
John is a great resource for that. Uh, John can be reached through uh, BJB and um, he can definitely help you figure out a lot about which resin, which silicone uh, is going to be most appropriate for uh, this kind of work like this. So yeah. again, John, big thanks to you for coming on camera and doing this with me. I appreciate it. And for those of you watching, again, check the video description and of course the end screen. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And thanks for supporting and following the channel.